welcome to the view, y'all. Welcome to the view. Welcome to the view. Welcome to the view. Now, this is an earth-shattering question I have to pose to you all. <laughs> and it is this. Is it ever okay to lie to your partner? Women's Health Magazine asked a relationship expert who said she's against lying as a rule, but says it's okay to leave out details of stuff like past relationships. Oh. Mm -hmm. But so, how about, you know, you were amazing last night. How about that? <laughs> is that okay? Go with that. That's, that's okay. Well, I generally am amazing. But also, <laughs> so you don't need to ask. Is the best policy, except for when I ask my husband, does this make my butt look big? And I want him to say no. And you want to lie. And a little soft lie. I call it a soft lie. I'm not a liar in, in relationships, but I am an omitter. Right? I omit. I omit. So if I bought three pairs of shoes, I may not parade them across the, you know, across the room, I may just put them in the closet. Why? It's your money. What do you care? I just, I just, but, you know, I think couples fight about sex, they fight about kids, they fight about fin finances. Yeah. So yeah, I don't you have your finances I, I and you're taking care of stuff. See, to me, that's not good. The omissions? Omissions are not good. I omit. You know, because <laughs> it's like, it's like the butt thing. I think the butt thing is the worst thing ever. And I'll tell you why. Because if you can't trust the person you love to tell you the truth, the one person who actually does give it what you look like when you mm -hmm. go out, you don't want that person saying mm -hmm. no. Oh, no, I'm fine if he tells me my butt doesn't look big because for me it becomes psychological. You know, if you've had kids and you start feeling a little insecure about your body, I kind of want that positive reinforcement for my husband, but even if it does look a little big because I know he's going to love me regardless. Are in. Thank you. Uh, in. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> I take back my answer though, Sunny. I'm not no mitter. I'm actually a liar. So what I do is. <laughs> make sure I cleared the record. So if I, I remember a couple months ago when I go downstairs, I set up a training session and I would come up late every time and Max was like, would have the bit and he's like, where have you been? Mm -hmm. And I'd always tell him that he goes, did you stop and talk? That was the truth. I did stop and talk. But what I said was, it was really hard today. I, it ran late. So I kind of well, well, it did run lies. late. It's been, but because you were told. Yeah, so but. that's where I'm really good at lying, and I really sell it with my eye. I'm like, oh my God, it was so hard. And <laughs> you know, I was just talking. What I want to know is, what, what do you lie about in sex, Sonny? Oh. Do you lie? You about lie? Sex? Here we, see, here yeah. we go with the with the sex talk yeah, that okay. I'm always uncomfortable well, with. What are the lies? You brought it up yourself. She brought it up. In this the court omission. of inquiry, she raised the kid. Yes, she did. Did I say that I lied yeah, during said, sex? You, uh -oh. About sex? You said, Sonny, go. Sex? You said these are the lies. Oh, sex, no, no, money, I said, I said, I said, Oh, no, no. I said people, couples argue. Come with me. People, <laughs> couples argue about sex, finances, and well, children. Well, okay, let's do it hypothetically then. What's the sex lie? A frequency? Uh, like what they. I have a headache like that? Um, I don't really lie about sex. Not you. Okay, people. Oh, people. What do those people say? <laughs> I heard that people, like, will tell their partner, that was great, yeah. and, and it wasn't. You were I, amazing. The, I started with that. All the stats, that people, right? which means code for, not I've me. done it before. Not no. you? No. Mm -mm. I don't have to lie about I don't sex. Oh. How about this? Yeah. <laughs> I'm over this now. I'm, I'm, I can't take it. I, I'm sorry. Summer vacation <laughs> season is in full swing right now. Oh, yeah. Do you bring the kids or leave them at home if you're able to? Is, is it still a vacation when you're taking care of the kid? Why are the only choice is to leave them home or take them? What happened to yeah. an orphanage? That does... <laughs> <laughs> you're not taking a vacation for the rest of your life. You're, just, <laughs> you're not giving the kids I know. away. Uh, grandma, grandma, leave them with grandma <laughs> and go off and do your thing. I think, you, I, I mean, I remember... Talk to grandma. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I remember, remember road tripping with my parents, but I always envisioned when I had my own kids that I'd get time to get away without the kids. Like, if I can, like if there's yeah. someone to leave them with because I think you need to remember I'm learning it's overwhelming and I, I would need to step away to kind of refuel to come back and do some more parenting. You really need a vacation, I don't you? Yeah, I know, girl. <laughs> One of our producers said there's a distinction. A vacation is what you do with your kids. A trip is something that you do without your kids. I, and I, I think I it's the opposite. That. To me, a trip is something you take your children. Yeah, you go to Europe. You go to Europe with your children yes. so that you educate them and you take a vacation, lay on the beach you and let them run around. I, I enjoy going away with my children. I, I feel like, you know, when we're at work all day and then they're at school all day. You don't yeah. get enough time to spend time with them and be with them. And, and I just enjoy that time where we're just all together and, you know. Maybe when they're older, though, because you see a lot of people traveling when they're kids. And I think I've it's not a vacation for the kids because they're, they're, off, they're off their schedule. It's not a vacation for you and you're paying for all of it. So I feel like... I when you go yeah. away with your kids, you almost need another trip. You need a vacation from your yeah. vacation. My, I was actually thinking about this. Mm -hmm. We have three kids, eight, six, and two, and my husband have only, my husband and I, we've been away individually, but collectively, the two of us, we've only gone away for six nights without our kids in nine years. In nine years. Without oh our children. God. Yeah. yeah. Kidding that me? sounds no. about right. That's depressing. We need to get away without our children. You but started the journey. I've got nine years. Yep. Yeah. No, you, you chart your own, what about our, own date course. Night? Because we you do don't have to nights. go away on a vacation to bond with your spouse, right? right? You can just we go, go to the movies. Listen, I don't think about, you, again, you guys overthink stuff. For yeah. me, I just, it's not stuff I ever 
ever think about. Either we're together and we're lucky and we're, or we're not. You know, I usually I'm working and they can go and do whatever they need to do. But I don't like to sit around. I'm not good at it. Yeah. So I kind of like, I'll say, hey, I'm going here. And they'll go, you want company? I'll say, sure, I won't see you. But come anyway. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And it's great. This way I say we went together and then I don't have to play with it. <laughs> but how about this? The mother, the mama of a very inquisitive little boy and he has a special name and I'm just looking for it because oh here it is she wrote a blog which I loved and they really don't want me to do this but I'm doing it anyway the name of the blog is seven ways to raise a little ask <laughs> without losing your mind and I thought that was beautifully written. written. And she says, when we are deadline, I tell my son, he can ask five questions about something and the rest he <laughs> will have to save until later. And he carefully counts out his questions. <laughs> but That's why brilliant. Stop children from asking questions. Because they can say why to everything. So why? That's their job. Why? Yeah. I <laughs> because uh, why? you make up stuff. <laughs> why? Why? <laughs> Sarah, you know what's a great game I to play? I almost used my five joy. <laughs> you know what's a great game to play? Um, you know, my, my, I was nicknamed Paula 20 Questions. I just wouldn't shut up as a child. And of course, I'm a reporter. You, you were labeled the same thing. Same my thing. daughter is now the same. A great game to play is, uh, look at the quiet game. I'll give a dollar or five dollars to whoever can be quietest the longest. It's, I mean, it works. It works. That it works. works. See, some of you use it too. My, my kids are on the fire. I, I, I like the exchange. I wonder if that would work on this table. Uh, yes. <laughs> I like the exchange. I like the exchange of information. I love to talk with my kids. They ask questions. I am answer. I asked them questions. My father used to um, sing you a song. You want this Mary Sunshine. I, yeah, um, the exchange my, of information. I like, I like that. I think it's really important. And then um, my, my father um, used to say, call me the inquisitive child because I asked so many questions and he made up a song. He plays the flute and it was inquisitive child. Sometimes the questions get wild. Like daddy, where is that big elephant over there? There, there, this is there. The and I oh guess yeah. so he And he has like tons, he's like tons of verses because of all the crazy questions I would ask. And, I, and so you're a lawyer. And I'm a lawyer, not a singer. And can I ask a question of and the two? Is your father, I hate to say it. <laughs> <laughs> and on right. that note, we'll be right back. <laughs> How much do the ladies chalk up their success? Oh. We are just a font of information today. <laughs> Welcome back. Some successful people don't like to admit that luck had anything to do with their success. But a Cornell economist says you, the more you acknowledge it, the more successful you will be. Admitting that luck played a role mm -hmm. means you're maybe more humble, yeah. you know, which people may respond to better. You think this? <coughs> yes, I agree with that. I mean, you can't say that everything you did is because you're such a genius. Only, you know, certain narcissists, I won't mention names, do that. <laughs> <laughs> I know his initials, it's okay. <laughs> DT are his initials. I'm gonna do it alone and it's me and I'm gonna do it. I mean, most people have a combination of skill and luck, in my opinion, when they succeed. You're in the right place at the right time. You know, you have to be, what do they used to say? Preparation plus luck, luck equal, is what equals success. Preparation meets opportunity. That's it. It's yeah. from a Roman philosopher, Seneca, and I've always believed that. I dated him. <laughs> that's, 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 luck is what happens when preparation meets opportunity. There's just no question about it because you yeah. see people, you know that there are people just as talented as you are, uh, just as driven as you are, and, and for whatever reason, they may not make it. And I think so much of it just has to be, it's just, it's just luck of the draw. Yeah. yeah. I, I don't know, I say good luck to people, but I honestly don't really believe in luck. I believe, no, no I, I honestly really don't. I believe in blessing and hard work and you reap what you sow. And I think, you know, you just keep doing you and you take the high road, even when, you know, people may attack you or things may happen. I think you always take the high road, you work hard, and the last shall be first. That's, but it's funny because it made me really realize, I do, I do say good luck, but I don't really believe in luck. So when, they, when bad things happen to good people, that's just bad luck, isn't it? I don't think it's bad luck. I think those are all opportunities to, to come up from the ashes and to, and to show your attitude. I think a lot is revealed about you in hard times and how you respond to the okay, adversity. Well, what if you get sick? Or what if you're born in a, in a war driven, in a war ridden country? What's the word I'm looking for? Yeah. A, a war, war torn. A war torn country I don't or think something. You luck. happen yeah. to be born in Syria in the middle of this crisis that we're having. That's luck. That's bad luck. You happen to be there. Yeah. Or what I, about people that just don't have opportunity? Well, that's a big thing when you look at any success you've had. It's, it's, it's oftentimes a combination of your drive and your work ethic, yes, mm -hmm. but that you got the opportunity to have that meeting or to meet, you yeah. met someone else. It's always a connection. And when you look back, you got lucky a lot. I mean, I've gotten yeah. lucky a lot. Me too. Like they used to say about George W. Bush, he was born on the third base and acts like he's on, had started at home plate. He already had all the advantages, advantages, advantages. And then I he just disagree. had to sort of, you know, hit the ball. I don't disagree with that, that yeah. some people are born to more opportunities than others. Yeah. yeah. But, you know, I, I, I do think, you know, coming from a very lower to middle class family, paying my way through college, I, I don't, 
I, I think that hard work is also what can drive a lot of people and I'm not going to be, you know, I didn't allow myself to be victimized by the fact that I, we didn't have tons of money to go to college. I think you roll your sleeves up and you work really hard and at the end of the day that, you know, that speaks, speaks volumes. You know, everybody has assets and good points. Yeah. And that's what you have to focus on. What can I contribute to make myself better? And then that's, that's, that, that's making luck work for you or your good assets work for mm -hmm. you. When you were born very pretty, for example, mm -hmm. you were born to an intact family. People yeah. loved you. Those are all good luck, that's luck aspects. That's luck. I mean, and if you think about someone like Donald Trump Jr., does he really need luck? Didn't really no, need he that much his, luck. He needed his million dollars from his father. Got, exactly. That helped. That yeah, helped. It, it helped. But he doesn't necessarily need luck because he has the opportunity. Is it's it more so situational or is it luck? His kids act like it's all about luck, luck, luck. And then you see no. that they also are in his business. They've yes. been given a leg up. They've mm -hmm. been given daddy's money, daddy's uh, jobs, etc. His company. And you know. That's why it's preparation plus opportunity. Luck. Well, if they weren't prepared, I guess they wouldn't mm -hmm. succeed. I don't know. I'm well prepared. We'll be right back. <laughs> Which co-hosts have dated a... Welcome back. So an article in The Week looks at the growing trend of password rage. Uh -huh. Since the average person has 19 freaking passwords oh between all of their devices and all the accounts. <laughs> I don't know about you, but I'm pissed all the time. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Can't the we do something thing. about it? It's a nightmare. I mean, mine is joy123. Too obvious? <laughs> <laughs> no, I've gotten to the point where my password, I make it, I get angry by the sixth prompt. So I'm like, the password is, you're in for. Like, <laughs> I'm mad at the computer. Maybe you should make that the password. No, I have. That is actually I my like account. That. Thank you. Like, yeah, but you can't you tell to, that to everyone. But then you have to change it well, I'm not telling you which account. <laughs> it could be my Netflix. Like, get crazy. <laughs> there's, there's nothing worse, though, than having a really incriminating, um, embarrassing password and then having to share that with somebody else, like somebody from work or somebody from the tech department when they're trying to and get it. And you're like, I'm really sorry to tell you this. I'm really embarrassed, but here it is. I mean, and it's something so incriminating. I, you know, I, I, I sort of vacillate between I want everything protected and I don't want to get hacked and I want my information to be safe, but all the prompts to change your password. Or that it's weak. Every, yeah, every 90 days, at least, you know, at work. And then do you change all of them this to the same password? I don't. And that's where I go wrong. No, because, exactly. Because then I, I have different ones. Right. And then I wanted to write them down in my phone. And they said that you shouldn't do that. Because if your phone gets hacked, then someone can get to all of your accounts. Oops. So where do you write it down? Well, if you on put it, you, if put you put it in thought. your... <laughs> Nobody will go if there. If you put it in... Uh, if you, th There are all kinds of apps that will hold on to your password. Really? Yeah, yeah. There is you can, one. There are, there are several. You can I get downloaded it and forgot the password. Again. <laughs> <laughs> See, that's the problem. It's like I a know safe. had that. That's like a safe. And you forget it's the vault. Yeah. I haven't been back in since the day I purchased it. Uh -huh. It's called Vault. Yes, Vault. Vault. It's great. Huh. But uh, some people can't remember the password they came up with to use Vault. And now she doesn't know, and now all her passwords are floating out in the air. That works. It was an MDA move with a YMCA finish. That's why I think it's nice to have All right. Speaking of big things, how Hello. big of an age gap is too big in a relationship? Because apparently Glamour asked the psychologist, why are you asking the psychologist? Why not ask some women? <laughs> anyway, <laughs> well, what is the psychologist who said that any more than 10 years can be a problem when it comes to stuff like relating to each other as well as family, friends accepting it? Really? Mm. Uh, apparently. I'm seven years older than Steve. Even though. That's not a big one. I'm you five are? years older yeah, I am. than Max. I'm two years older. I'm older than John. Look, like a table. Older than John. I know, I know. What? All cougars. <laughs> guy for four years though that was 18 years older than me uh -huh. when I was in my 20s and really? now uh, in his defense he looked really good and I could not tell I was not looking for I did not have a daddy complex but he was amazing and my mom pointed out to me because we got really serious she said this could be a problem because right now you're both young mm -hmm. when he gets older yeah. you want to go on a ski trip or you want to travel with the kids there's going to be a point where bodies start to shut down and it's going to change your well, lifestyle and your tell you, I, I had a very 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 young man once how young? Hello. How young? How young? How young? Come on, details. Can you be no 18? details? Yeah, mm -hmm. I can. Whoa! Yeah. Mm -hmm. And How old the was reason he? I more knew it was I was more than 18 years old. Older, yeah. But the reason I knew it was not going to work is because he once said to me, "Paul McCartney had a band before Wings." Oh. <gasps> well, see, and it's that connection. And that yeah. is the thing that says, "Oh." <laughs> Yeah, I can't do this. How good is this sex? That, 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 I will say this. Um, my grandmother, before she passed, um, her second husband was 20 years younger. Mm -hmm. When she got Perfect. sick in her 80s, he left her. Because, oh. And, and a lot of it... You? Yeah. I, I, I'm still so angry with him about it, and I'll never forgive him for it. Um, but he said she was too old for him. 
You're kidding. And that, that's a little late too. To decide that. Yeah, but they that? were together for 40 years. For, oh. And 40? he left her when she got sick because she was in so her he was 80s. 60, she was in, oh, he was in his 60s, she was in her 80s? She was in her 80s. That 20 year difference, 18 years, that could that, be a that, problem. That is not, that is no guarantee, babe. That's no guarantee yeah. because we've seen politicians do it. Uh, and leave Men their, do it better. And, and leave their wives who suddenly get sick. Yeah. yeah, and they're like they're on to the next thing, and it, and they're the same age. You know, yeah, boneheads are boneheads. Yeah. Sometimes you yeah. get you get a bonehead, and that's yeah. what you did. But yeah. yeah, age that's not age. This but was. I think, I think it's a good idea to be a little older than your husband because men. Uh, don't live as long well, as women. you have to teach them stuff, well, no, but first men of don't live as long as women. They're That's statistically true. Mm -hmm. So it, you both sort of will die around the same time that way. Otherwise, uh, you're a widow for too long, because they yeah, go first. They're also more immature. Um, <laughs> I'm a very practical more, girl. Just so well, practical. this is all. I'm painting with a, a broad, broad strokes here, but they're a little more immature sometimes. So I always used to date older, because then I could mm -hmm. at least speak on the same level. But yeah, yeah, but you can train them when they're young. Yeah, that's the Yeah, yeah but, that's but, you know, training them is not the same as having them do it right. Uh, Woo! We'll be right back. Was... Hello, we're the Manzari Brothers, and we're going to teach. So, John and Leo Manzari are following in the legendary footsteps of another tap dancing team of brothers, Maurice and Gregory Hines. And when I saw these guys perform, I just felt like I needed them to come here and to help us, because you know we're always out of sync. So please <laughs> welcome John and Leo Manzari. Hey, y'all. So, what age did you start dancing? Mm. Uh, well, I started at age three, and Leo started at age two, and we followed in the steps of our older sister. So, so your sister dances as well. Yeah, yeah absolutely. absolutely. So it definitely runs in the family. Yeah, absolutely. She's right there, y'all. Yes. <laughs> and that's your mom in the black. Yeah. Hi, mom. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I know you guys are huge fans of Maurice and Gregory Hines, yeah, yeah. also a tap dancing brother duo like yeah. yourselves. Now, Maurice discovered you guys? Mr. Hines discovered us and has been great ever since. And you guys had tap dancing duels with him. Can yeah. you tell us about that? On stage, we, yeah. um, we trade a lot and we yeah. just kind of go at each other. And it's been great getting to know him over the years because the more that you know someone, the more you want to do and the more you give back to the other person. Mm -hmm. Is that intimidating at all? I mean, that. At first it was, but now we know him so well that it's just, it's more uh, enjoyable than anything. You're insane. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. We're move. talking to one another. Yeah. You know? yeah. And I know Whoopi recently hosted a salute to the late Marvin Gaye at the Kennedy Center, <laughs> and you guys were there. What was that like? That was great. I mean, we, it was an honor for us to honor Marvin Gaye. We danced to a piece called I Want You. Uh, and we're from DC. Oh. So for us to dance oh. to his music, and also a native Washingtonian, it just it meant a lot to us. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's amazing. Yeah. Seeing how amazing these two are, but for those of you who have not, you're about to see something kind of spectacular and special. So here to perform a special tap number called Savannah of the Manzari Brothers.
So I want to tell you something. Here's what I, here's what I want to tell you. When I was little and I would watch Heinz, Heinz and Dad on television on, you know, Ed Sullivan or any of these, that's what this felt like. This feels like, you know, you don't always see it, but man, when you see it done beautifully, Savion does it beautifully, you guys do it beautifully, it's just bravo. Yeah. Bravo. <laughs> now, see. You see how everybody's hanging on to you? See how they're all like, because they think they're going to be able to do this. This yeah. is what they think they're going to do. Not really. Because you make it look easy. So you can teach us a couple of moves, right? Absolutely. But spread out broads. Okay. Spread. Oh, my gosh. All right. You're right there. So what we're going to do, uh -huh. we're going to start off with a shuffle step combination. Uh -huh. Okay. Start off with your right foot. Pick it up. Hold your core in balance. You're going to brush forward. Once I get my balance, pick it up. Brush forward. Brush it back. Put it down. That's one. Do it on the left side. Push forward, push back, down. Good. Now we're going to do shuffle, step, step. Pick it up. Shuffle, step, step. Now one more shuffle, step. Shuffle, step. Good. Try that whole sequence on the left. Shuffle, step, right. Shuffle, step, two steps. Left, shuffle, step, step, shuffle. Step. Step. <laughs> you know. <laughs> I don't even know what to say about that. I'm just going to say this. Yes. You know, you can catch them in Zari Brothers dancing with Maurice Hines this fall. Please check out our website. And in addition to their incredibly insane dancing, you can hear Leo and the All Be Band on their new album, Corner. We will be right back. That's the band. <laughs> What pushed you to go after your dreams? My dad always said, when you're doing what you love, it won't feel like work. <laughs> Enjoy. I was 39 years old. I had a near-death experience and a divorce. What more to do but to become a stand-up comedian? <laughs> what about you, Will? No one ever told me I couldn't, <laughs> so I just did. Smart, funny. have teamed up with Youth Service America on a mission to inspire kids to make a difference in their community with ABC's Summer of Service. Young people ages 5 to 18 can apply for $500 grants to help make their communities healthier, greener, and stronger. And we're joined right now by one applicant, Amy Picasso, and her college counselor, Christina Ortiz. Welcome. Welcome. Thank you. Now, Christina, you're Amy's college counselor. Yes. And the one who encouraged her to apply for this. Yes. Can you tell us a little bit about the incredible work she's done and why you felt she'd be good for this? Definitely. Um, well, Phipps Neighborhood had received a grant to start a group, and a part of that group was to have community service projects attached to it. Um, and what we first noticed was that Amy first was the first one always to volunteer. <laughs> and along with that, she was able to bring kids from her school and the community along with her. Um, some of the projects she helped coordinate was our breast cancer walk, our HIV walk, our body image fashion show, and our peace conference to raise um, gun awareness. So, um, yeah. <laughs> so she... <laughs> So um, she's kind of created this culture in the school where kids can come up to her and talk to her about, you know, sensitive issues because they know the type of girl she is and how um, caring she is about her community. And that's the sign of a true leader. Yep. That's a sign of a true leader. Thank you. No question. Um, Amy, you're 16 years old. You're a straight A student mm -hmm. from the South Bronx. I'd like to add. <laughs> I'm from the South Bronx. Um, and you're really looking forward to, to going to college in two years. Um, what inspired you to start helping your community in the way that you do? I was inspired to help my community. Basically, when I was little, my mom showed me to take care of others. And ever since, I was happy to help others. My, when I was little, I went to Mexico, and I used to see how poor kids were, and they weren't able to attend school since they didn't have enough supplies to go to school with. And ever since, I wanted to make a difference for them. Now, Amy... You and your family lived in the Fulton Family Residence Shelter in the Bronx for several several years, and thankfully your dad got a job mm -hmm. about a year ago, and you're now in an apartment. But you, what was the biggest challenge for the kids that lived there? The biggest challenge for kids that lived over there was not having stuff to call their own, such as school supplies. They won't be provided with school supplies, and they will lack their education. So that's one of the biggest problems. So in the shelter, it was a problem getting just school supplies? Yeah, so it's in school. Wow. Um, let me ask you this. You said Christina encouraged you to apply for the ABC Summer of Service grant, which is $500. If you're awarded that grant, what would you do with it? 
If I was awarded the grant, I would use the money to buy school supplies and give the kids a need so they could attend school and have a great year. Amy, yeah. Amy, where does this sense of duty come from? Because no matter what comes into your world, you keep wanting to give it back. And that's not, um, you know, that not everyone feels that way. In fact, not many people do. Mm -hmm. Well, basically, my mom and my father taught me that, like, to care for others. And I want to thank God for waking me up every day to give me strength so I could do better. Your mom's here, right? Her mom is right in the audience. She must be so proud of you. <laughs> she is. Do you have siblings? Yes, I do. How many? Two, in fact. Wait, what? Two. Two, two brothers. Two brothers? They're younger. Okay. Mm -hmm. and, and, and let me ask you this. Where do you want to go to college in two years? Oh, I have, like options. Well, NYU. <laughs> I have One options. of them is NYU. Oh, that's yes. great. Cool. You, they'd be lucky to have you. Well, and you're so young and looking out toward the rest of your life, what do you want to do? I want to be a psychologist or a counselor. Well, we wanted to give you some great news. ABC has chosen you as one of their recipients for their Summer of Service grant. Our sponsor, Boxed, which is the online version of a wholesale shopping club where you can buy everyday essentials in bulk and have them delivered to your door without any membership fees, also heard about your story. And they want to help you pay it forward by donating $500 worth of school and cleaning supplies to the kids at the Fulton Family Residence Shelter. Amy, there's another thing that Box wanted to help you with. They know that you're a straight-A student and are very much looking forward to going to college. So, when you are accepted, Box is going to give you $10,000 to help pay your tuition. <laughs> Can you just give us a little reaction? Oh. I've seen so much. A more of a but I just want to know what you're, what's running through your head right now. I'm really thankful. Yeah. It's like, so many. Well, you deserve it. You got a, you have straight A's. You deserve this. You deserve this. ¿Cómo te sientes? ¿Cómo te sientes ahora? Gracias. Sin palabras. She says, Agradecida con Dios primeramente y con usted. She says she's just so happy. She's without words. Just without words. Those are the best. Those are the best moments. So we want to give our thanks to Amy Picasso and Christina Ortiz. From now until September 30th, you can apply for a Summer of Service grant just like Amy. Go to our website to get more information on how to apply and share what inspires you. We'll be right back. really got cooking. The way to my heart is through my stomach. Oh, here we go. Mama has needs besides food. Let's just say that. Oh, Paula. You have as many frying pans as you want to. Tell them, Whoopi. Unless you're good at what you do, Mama don't have no need. Well, we've come to the end of our show, and we want you to have a great day. We want everyone to take a little time to enjoy whatever view you happen upon.